my name is Lena Krupina. As soon as we finished the World Cup, a tournament started in Russia. This year spoils us for the number of tournaments. So the Russian Federation of RG launched its own series of cups called the Cup of the Strongest. And from June 5th in Luzhniki, there was the first stage hosted. How it all will be organized, there is no available information yet. But we know that there will be several stages and you can guess that it will be like the World Cup series. So today in the video, we will talk about how the all around ended for the gymnast, what interesting things were discussed in the gym and about the group team and the top gymnasts of Russia, how they performed in Moscow. Well, before the, the start of the video, do not forget to subscribe to the channel to be aware of the life from rhythmic gymnastics. And also you can support me using links in the description given that youtube is not monetized now in russia this is especially important for me thanks a lot in advance well in the best traditions of the russian tournaments within the same start the gymnasts performed according to the rules of russia and the rules of the international gymnastics federation it is still not clear how the distribution of whom will perform according to what rules will work but slada karmarenka performs either according to one or the other and the Verena sisters have not yet readjusted to the new ones and according to the rules of Fitch, Averna's lost to Lala in Dubai. Dina and Irina win in international competitions and Lala wins Russian once. The broadcast of the tournament was very good. They even showed it on TV for two days, which I was incredibly happy about. It's really sad that these videos can't back up the words and I have to look for all sorts of workarounds. So many thanks to everyone for the materials that you send me. On the first day, when the gym began their performances, a very interesting conversation was caught on the live, but uh, then the broadcast was quickly blocked. Was this due to the fact that the conversation got there or there was a copyright blocking, but the information was fried exclusive, quoting from the chat. So supposedly Irina Wiener had a conversation with Irina Vikorchik, who used to be the head coach of the Israeli national team and now coaches the Russian team in group. And she had made claims about the children who are taken to the national team, saying that they do not know how to throw nor to dance. And the basic work with the apartheid suffers a lot. And that is why Russian gymnasts can lose according to the FIDG rules, given that the rules of the International Gymnastics Federation has changed dramatically. Of course, this conversation was not heard completely and nor in context, but an interesting point is that Irina Vygorchik, together with Ksenia Dudkina, another coach of the Russian national team, watched the performances of individual gymnasts. I think it's obvious that they want to pull some of the individual gymnasts into the group, as this was generally the case before. Well, for the claims against the gymnasts, it's strange that the national team coach puts them forward saying that they do not know how to do something. They come to the national team to learn and be the best. Well, let's talk about the results and the all around. So so the gold medal among the gymnasts born in 2007-2009 or Russian juniors was won by Alisa Medvedeva, born in 2008 representing Moscow. Silver in the Russian juniors was won by Ulyana Yanos representing the Omsk region and the bronze medal was won by Alina Bukitirova, a gymnast born in 2009 and representing Moscow. As usual, you can find the full results in the Telegram channel, group in VK, Yandexen or Facebook. In the all around, according to the rules of Fitch, Lala Kramarenko won the gold. Lala performed with a heavily taped leg, which of course caused concern among the fans, but I think it's already a well-known fact that all gymnasts of the national team face injuries, and there are no healthy ones at this level. So let's hope that Lala has nothing serious. In the exercise, she scored 39 points, which of course was also shocking, and the overall lead was more than 10 points. So it's hard for me to even imagine who can compete with Lala now except Lala herself. The second place was taken by Anastasia Guzinkova. Of course, she did not score points of 39, but in general, she performed stably in all four events, which allowed her to be with a silver medal. Anna Popova won bronze, the same junior who, according to Russian rules, can compete in seniors. And if the hoop didn't work out for her at all, then the ball she even overtook Lola, receiving 39 and 6 tenth. Of course, comparing with the scores of Fitch, these seem to be as unrealistic as possible. Well, whoever has not seen Anya for a long time could finally see her and understand that she was generally in a very good shape. Well, by the way, I 
thought that perhaps this new rule with the lowering of age for seniors was made so that the gymnasts that return to the world level are already ready for performances, since the absence of international starts will certainly affect girls anyway. Or maybe just in the current seniors, Irina Wiener does not see a leader, and among the juniors, there are Anna Pohova and Maria Brisova, whom she probably wants representing at the world level as the first numbers of the Russian national team. But this is just simple reasoning and my thoughts why everyone is doing this. Vladislava Nikolayenka took 4th place, which was an unexpected result. Vlad is not considered the leader of the national team and represents the Nizhny Novgorod region. And to see her rise so high for the gymnast of the region, it seems to me a great success. Maria Borisova took 5th place in the all-around. After the first day, she was 3rd. Masha is very loved by the fan circles and it's great that she manages to bypass so many seniors. The sixth place was taken by Alina Protasova, a gymnast from St. Petersburg. Not everything worked out in the all-around, but the result was worth in any case. But you start to worry about Daria Trubnikova. She took only seventh place, although she is presented on a pair with Lala, given who was declared from the country for international starts. Of course, Dasha had just recovered from an injury and you can make allowances for this. But honestly, it seems to me that Dasha sometimes is quite unlucky. At first, the rules in which the apartas dominated and speed was needed, which is difficult for a long leg gymnast. Now, the Russian rules according to which there is a feeling that Dasha is not succeeding so much. But we must give Dasha her due. She does not give up and continues working. A funny moment happened in the exercise with the hoop as she did not show that her apartheid rolled out of the carpet. On the TV broadcast, this was not visible, but in the gym, they admired how she confidently continued the routine. The topic here is just the recent shorts that I posted with how gymnasts hide their losses and make them invisible, as if it, it were necessary. In general, real professionalism. Vladislava Sharonova, a gymnast who is probably admired by many, including me, pleased me with the 8th place in this tournament. Also an amazing thing is popularity and rating. For someone to be at the end of the top 10 is success, but for someone is a controversial result. With Vlada, of course, the story as a whole is interesting. She has repeatedly shown a high level, but for some reason Irina Viner's hands do not particularly touch her. What is the reason for this is a mystery to me. But Vlada is cool. I hope she will continue to succeed. Well, in the all-around, according to the rules of Fidge, Dina Verina won the gold, beating her sister by only two tenths. And Irina won the first three events, and everyone already thought that Arisha would be the winner. But not this time. Well, for Dina, this was another gold in the piggy bank. By the way, an amazing fact that the entire tournament, Irina Viner was as pleased as possible with everything and the performance of the girls, and the girls themselves almost always smiled. In general, the atmosphere of the tournament, although it was international, was somehow straight home. And about the good mood of Irina Wiener, they began to joke that after the divorce, she became more cheerful, because just during the tournament, she had a divorce trial. Irina Verina won the silver medal of the tournament. Unfortunately, not everything went smoothly, and the ending in the ribbon turned out to be blurry. So, Arisha herself was obviously upset. As a result, the gap that she earned in the three events did not help her, her stay in first place. But a small spoiler, in the finals, Arena took her role. Yasmina Rahimova from Uzbekistan became the third, and the gaps here are also, of course, gigantic. Gymnasts from Uzbekistan participating in the tournament are far from the strongest gymnasts of Uzbekistan, although the tournament is called the Cup of the Strongest. An interesting observation, if we compare the scores with the last international tournament, then Sofia's scores are closer to Yasmina scores than to the Verena scores and either the girls are overestimated because of the home tournament or whether they really would bypass Sofia so much at the World Cups. I personally am very interested. Write in the comments what you think about it. Irina Aninkova competed according to the Russian rules but on the second day she withdrew from the competition and many people lost her too. So after the tournament it became known that on the second day in the morning Irina felt a pulling pain 
in her previously injured leg. Together with Irina Vinner and Irina Sergeyevna, the personal trainer of the gymnast, it was decided not to take risks. They decided to save her leg and recover for the next starts in order to avoid another injury. So now Irina will be recovering in Novogorsk with the doctors of the team. What I was especially glad about is that Irina Vinner supported the decision to withdraw from the tournament so as not to aggravate the injury. Well, Irina quite fought for high places according to the Russian rules, so after the first day she took fifth line. Another interesting gymnast that I would like to mention is Igna Vilova from the Yaroslavl region. I like girls who catch something on big starts and then you start to consistently follow them and in a year or two they become fan favorites. So I definitely had this with Alina Perfilieva from whom I have been getting high for such a long time and now she is in the tops. Write in the comments who first became your favorite and only then popular. I'm sure there would be many interesting names here, the same Vladislava Nikolayenka or Vladislava Sharonova. Alisa Yankovenka had a very interesting leotard for the ribbon and unrealistically cheerful music and one that everyone remembers for sure. <laughs> <laughs> the Leotard reminds me of Litra Panagiota, a Greek gymnast. This style is about the same, but Litra's music is certainly not so cool. Well, according to the finals of individual events, in general, nothing wildly surprising. Among the gymnasts competing with the Russian rules, Lala Kramarenka won all gold. Probably the only interesting thing is Lala's high scores and further routine in clubs. For example, she scored 42 and 4 tenths, which of course seems just something fantastic. Anastasia Gozinkova won the silver in the final with hoop and Daria Trubnikova won bronze. In the ball, Anna Popova won silver and Anastasia Guzinkova won bronze. In clubs, according to the Russian rules, Anna Popova won silver and Maria Borisova bronze here. Second in the ribbon was Alina Protasova and bronze for Vladislava Nikolayenka. The Russian rules are, of course, a very good motivation for the girls in terms of not standing still, at least for individual girls. But the question of how useful this is for their future career and health still seems to me sore. Well, you can probably keep silence for the groups here in general. It's not clear what is happening with them, with everyone, with adults and with juniors especially considering the fact that girls don't compete anywhere. And on top of that, there is no one to compete with except perhaps themselves. And even given that girls are taken from regions and they work the same as if they were when they are preparing for the world tournament, it's hard for me now to understand how will they motivate themselves to continue training in the national team. For individual gymnasts, at least, there are tournaments among themselves. But in groups, well, I think not a single region can compete even close to the national team. Probably the story is the same with Lala Kramarenka, who has no one to compete with in Russia. According to the classical rules of the International Gymnastics Federation, in the finals, Arena Verina had an advantage, so Arena won gold everywhere except for her unyielding ribbon. Dina got gold in the ribbon, and in other events, she remained second place. Well, with bronze medals, it was varied by a partis. So Yasmina Rahimova won bronze in hoop and ribbon, Silva Sargsyan was third in the ball, and Yekaterina Fetisova did much better with the clubs in the finals than she did in the qualification and got bronze. Well, there are lots of things throughout the video that I'm interested in reading your thoughts about, so please meet in the comments and remember that I love you all very much and bye bye!